So uh, the Desert Fireball Network, initially it was really just purely set up to find uh, meteorites. Since building it, uh, we've realized that it can actually do a whole load of other stuff that we didn't quite realize when we, when we started. You know, geologists have put together a really nice story about how the Earth works as an entire system, and it's beautiful, it's really detailed. But in terms of how the Earth formed, how we make planets like the Earth, uh, that's, there's so many open questions with that. And meteorites are the only kind of real window we've got into that period of solar system history. The problem is we don't know where any of them come from. And so, uh, so by having this network of cameras, we can track them as they come in, go and get that rock, and we know where it came from in the solar system. So it gives us that kind of context uh, information that we've not had before. It's, so we've probably got more data than the entire existing data set of, in history now uh, that tells us kind of what um, debris is doing in the, in the inner solar system, in the region where the Earth is. And we're really just now reducing all that data, which is really exciting. Most of the, the large debris in the solar system is, uh, is in the asteroid belt, which is, uh, which is in between Mars and Jupiter. And, and this is part of the solar system where the, the way you build planets is, you know, you'll, you start with small stuff and gradually it builds up and up. And in the end, you get enough gravity, so things kind of accrete. You get a large object. Um, because Jupiter's there, uh, Jupiter was coming around every time, and essentially the gravity of Jupiter was so big it would disrupt that process. So, uh, so you only ever got kind of you know objects of maximum a few hundred kilometers across, and mostly much smaller than that in that part of the solar system. And that's great for us because uh, none of that material really had has been affected by all the other processes that happen to planets. It's kind of like we've got a little freeze moment of solar system history, this early period of solar system history. And this, the orbit of ours does go back through that belt. It's not a big surprise that it does. What will be cute is when we kind of really get into the detail of that orbit and track it back and run the clockwork solar system backwards in time and see does it match up with a specific asteroid, not just that general region, but can we actually match it to a specific asteroid? And that would be really exciting.